Folks, if you're trying to figure out what these people are doing, stick around for the extra. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. I'm Paul Majors. Coming up next, they call themselves furries, and one could live next door to you. Tonight, enter their bizarre world. It's a trip you won't soon forget. Plus, a Texas man opens his desk at work and becomes an instant millionaire. But next in the extra, a story that is unlike anything you've ever seen before, guaranteed. I'm dressed like this for the pet auction. Um, I don't normally. Who are these people? And what are they doing? What are they doing? Some answers when we come right back. The Twin Cities number one rated... By day, this Twin Cities man is a mild-mannered computer programmer, but on special nights, he goes absolutely wild. See if you can guess which creature he becomes. In tonight's extra, the growing subculture of people who call themselves furries. Well, your next door neighbor or colleague at work might be one and you'd never know it. Now, furries talk to each other on the internet, go to parties together and dress up as their favorite four-legged friends. Carolyn's Mark Daly recently traveled across the country with a group of Minnesota furries. It's a tale you won't forget. Julie Bowman of St. Louis Park was 12 years old when her grandma taught her to sew. Now, Julie's sewing tails for a group of friends who call themselves furries. The ermine tail. Uh, another... Oh, I didn't make any squirrel tails yet. Okay. Julie's furry friends go to conferences together. It's conference. Emphasis on the fur. Julie also made this purple guy for a friend named Lance. He's posable. You'll meet Lance a bit later. He goes to conferences, too. It's like being a little kid and having permission to do it for the entire weekend with a whole bunch of other adults that are acting like little kids. My name's Max. <coughs> I like the call. I've been into it for about six years now. Bugs Bunny's a furry. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. No, I just needed a tail really badly. I really wanted a tail. Actually, it was a dream. It's just not funny. Oh, hi. <laughs> Costume number one. <laughs> Last month near Los Angeles, more than a thousand furries herded together from all over the country. They strutted their stuff, spread their wings, and wagged their tails at this convention called Conference 8. I like playing role-playing games. Okay, but what's this furry stuff really all about? I can't tell you that. If I tell you that, we'll have to kill you. It's just an interest that a lot of people share. In a long time, my dear, give me a kiss. Come on. Not all furries wear full-body costumes. Dehydrate very quickly in these things. But it is fun to just cut loose once in a while, go wild, put on stripes, and just be a total zebra in the crowd. When he's not just a zebra in a crowd, Linz is an electronics technician. There are a lot more furry folks or furry fans than you might expect. Tiger Wolf is a retired Air Force officer who talks to other furries on the internet. Tiger Wolf says he met Crunch, the Timberwolves mascot, at a surprise party in Minneapolis two years ago. And we actually rented Crunch uh, to make an appearance. And obviously that was the big hit of the party. We are marionettes of the moon. Some furries at the conference enjoy singing furry songs. I must keep all of my heart. Probably blind stitched. For all the sewing that I do, I have no idea what all the technical terms are. <laughs> Julie Bowman taught other furries the finer points of costume design. I have a chin. And you get a nice kind of bobble when you walk with it and so on. It's actually fairly comfortable to wear. And some people just have no sense of humor. Remember Lance, that purple guy we told you about earlier? Well, Julie has a surprise for Lance. You want me to take my mask off? Well, I want to see what you think of it, guy. I'm, I'm proud of this thing. Whoa! Outrageous! Very nice! Many of those attending the conference here told us that being furry is just innocent child's play. Adults pretending to be kids. But a lot of what goes on here is undeniably adult-oriented. And it's not for everyone. Anyways, opening bid, $2. At the pet auction, for instance, furries bid for back rubs. $17.50. <laughs> and other pet services. The motives that are involved in many different areas would tend to be a little bit controversial. Uh, I don't really go in that direction. And the furry strip show is definitely not kid stuff. 
Well, here's the main body right here. So, I uh, created this character. He's called Tim Kangaroo, and he's sort of modeled after my own personality. He's kind of like a cartoon alter ego of myself. And you'll probably stop hearing me now. Timothy Fay is a programmer analyst for the University of Minnesota. Well, you know the rules? Yes, sir. You lead. Fay chose to attend more ordinary events at the conference. Events like a poolside time warp dance, sort of a furry horror picture show. Put your hands on your head. They're weird. They're weird. And then a little furry hokey pokey. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. This is the strangest thing you've ever seen. The strangest thing you've ever seen. You know, it's very weird. Well, it's not for everyone, but at least they don't shed. Mark Daly, Care 11 News. Out of the 1,200 furries at Conference 8, at least a couple dozen were Minnesotans. Conference 9 is set for January of 1998, just outside of Los Angeles.